everyone, welcome to or welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm just going to go ahead and get right into the video because I know it's going to be a little bit of a lengthy video because I just recently did a collaboration with Emily and she goes by at SoCal Socialite here on YouTube and also on Instagram. I'll make sure I put all her information in the description box below and also in this video so you can go check her out. I'm also going to be using a lot of resources and stuff and sewing tips and guides today and uh, the resources that I use for that I'll make sure that I put all that in the description box below as well so if you're interested in making a garment uh, with a pattern that you want to do like a fabric switch with then you can go ahead and check my description box as well as Emily's as well for all those resources so make sure you check Emily out as well because she will be doing a video as well and she'll walk you through her experience with this collaboration as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, so as I said before, we did this here. And as you can see from the front of the envelope, this pattern has three different views. So um, really views B and C is essentially the same dress because see you have the ruffle at the bottom and you still have the elasticated waist. The only difference is the sleeve variation. So you could do um, this short sleeve here, but it has gathers at the, at the waist and also on the sleeve. And as you can see, it has a collar band that uh, you could place around the neckline that forms into a pussy bow. And it's really neat really cool i love pussy bow ties for view c you're going to be doing the long sleeve version and it also has um gathering on the sleeve at the bottom of the sleeve as well now the difference with view a is that view a does not have a ruffle at the bottom of the skirt so the skirt is going to be a little bit shorter and as you can tell from Emily's picture, and I'll pop that here, the skirt falls about, it, it falls somewhere in the lower thigh area. So about three to four inches above the knee. So if you're looking to do this for fall or winter, I would suggest either lengthening the skirt or either using the ruffle option. Now for view A, the sleeves here are different for views B and C in a number of ways. So the first is for views B and C, I don't know if you can see here on this um, envelope. So I might have to pop a video in here and get really close up on the details of the garment. So the sleeve has gathering up here at the shoulder. And that is for views B and C. View A does not have that. It's just a flat inset. You're going to inset the sleeve and it's just a flat sleeve. However, with view C, it's a three quarter sleeve and it has a little bit of gathering at the forearm of the sleeve on the side of the sleeve. Just a really small gathering detail. So as I said, the waist is elasticated throughout the entire uh, garment from the front to the back. And yeah, so those are the views that you have, those three views. The only thing I did not particularly like about this garment or this pattern is that it doesn't come with a tie belt. And so if you've been following, following me for a long time, you already know anytime I make a garment that has an elasticated waist, I just have to make myself a tie belt. And that is for a number of reasons. The first is I don't particularly like elasticated waists, like garments that are elasticized and hugging on my waist. I just don't like the look of it, especially in photos or videos. It just looks a little awkward on me. And so I always find that putting um, a band or a tie of some sort that's flat always it looks more flattering for my figure and it also cinches in my waist and I don't have all those gathers and it just doesn't look kind of funky, you know? 
And so that's why I always like to make a tie belt. But this one doesn't have a tie belt in it. So I just self-drafted my own tie belt. And you'll see in my photos, um, I'll pop photos throughout the video and you can see what my garment looks like with the tie belt. Unfortunately, I forgot to take pictures without the tie belt. So uh, you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like by Emily's pictures. And then also I'll stand up and you can see what it looks like on me. Um, so the sizing and the amount of ease. So let's talk about that. So you can purchase this pattern in two different sizes. So two different uh, group sizings. So the first is this envelope here, which is envelope Y. And it comes in the sizes extra small, small, and medium. And then you can purchase the envelope for the next size, the next sizes up. And those sizes are going to include the large and the extra large. So those are the sizes that you have. So let me tell you about the sizing because small, medium, extra large, uh, you know, those are all arbitrary, right? So you kind of need some, like a guide as to what kind of sizes you're going to be looking at. The size that I chose based on my body measurements was the medium. And I could have selected the small, but I wasn't quite for certain if I was going to have that room in the bust area. So I decided, because my bust is a 39, my bust is 39 inches, but the small is 39 inches, okay? So I wanted some room for ease. So my option was to either select that size small, which is a 39 inches and not quite know how it was going to turn out with the bust. If it would be too tight, then you know what I mean? Um, but for the medium, it was 42 and a half. So I selected the medium so that I could have that room for my bus to breathe. And then for the waist, it was 46 and a half. And then for the hips, it was 40 or 51 and a half. So those are all the medium measurements, okay? So let me tell you about the ease because the ease between the unfinished measurements and the finished measurements is quite a bit. So for the medium, for my size, for the bust, it was six and a half inches of ease. For the waist, it was 18 and a half inches of ease. And for the hips, it was 13 and a half inches of ease. So as you can see, um, and I'll pop my pictures here so you can judge for yourself. But as you can see, I definitely could have selected a size small. And I'm thinking I could have even went down to the size extra small because it's six and a half inches of ease um, in this pattern for the bus. So I definitely could go down to that size um, extra small. And I think that's what I'm going to do next time. So that's just to give you an idea of um, what you're looking at, like going into the pattern, like how much ease it's going to have and um, and I understand the 18 and a half inches of ease for the waist because you need that to gather in the waist with the elastic. All right, so and... let's talk about the sleeves and the biceps. For me, um, when I'm looking at a pattern and like once I cut out my pattern pieces, the first thing that I go um, to alter is the biceps because that's just it's one of the things that I always have to alter. Like I usually don't have to do a full bicep or a full bust adjustment or a waist adjustment or hips adjustment. I usually don't have to do a whole lot of adjustments in that area, in those areas. It's usually the arms or my back. And so with the arms, so the bicep area for the pattern B and C the measurements are 16 to 16 and a half inches, which was perfect for me because I, my biceps are 14 and a half inches now. And that one and a half inches of ease or so is perfect for my arms. And as you can see, um, it's not 
too loose and it's not too baggy so it's just perfect for for me and it gives me the room that i need to move forward and backwards so i really like that now although the sleeve patterns for a b and c are all interchangeable the sizing for the sleeves are not all the same so for view a um that the room in that bicep area so going from one end of the pattern to the other it's 13 inches so it's measuring at 13 inches for the bicep now for me that's way too small i would definitely need to either add to the end of the pattern or do a full bicep adjustment i decided not to do view a for that very reason i did not want to do any bicep adjustments and so i just went ahead and made the adjustment or i went ahead and selected view was it C, view C, which is the longer sleeve. I also could have selected view, view B as well because view B also has that room for my biceps to breathe. Now, the difference, the other difference between A, B, and C in terms of like the sleeve is the sleeve head. So I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I'll go ahead and mention it just in case I didn't. For view A, the sleeves, you don't have this gathering here at the top of, of the sleeve head. It's just flat. So you also, if you, if you don't like that look, you know, that gathering up at the sleeve head, which is you, usually I don't go for that because I don't like to draw attention to my, my arms, but I decided to just go ahead and do it to see what it looks like. And honestly it's not that much like i've seen some patterns that has that gathering up at the sleeve that's just like really really bulky really big and it just wasn't worth me doing it it's not too big it's not too puffy i love the detail and i don't think it draws attention to my my uh biceps or my my arms at all so i really like that okay so let's talk about the instructions for this and also my commentary on the pattern. So the instructions were very simple to read, very easy. Um, in terms of like skills and skill level, I would definitely say this is an advanced beginner pattern because there are some skills that you need to know before going into this project. Simple things really. So if you're a beginner, I would say hold off, you know, a couple months, maybe make sure that you get a dress or two under your belt. Maybe do a dress that has an elastic, a simple elastic size waist. But the reason why I say this is an advanced beginner pattern is because there's a lot of gathering. So you're gathering the sleeve, you're gathering the waist. If you decide to do views B and C, you're gathering the ruffle because you have to gather the ruffle before you put it onto the dress. Um, and you're gathering not just the upper part of the sleeve, but if you decide to do views B and C, you're going to gather it either at the bottom of the sleeve or at the bicep area of the sleeve. There's just a lot of gathering. And if you're just not, you know, if you don't have that kind of skill if that's not a skill that you have it might be very overwhelming not that you can't do it but it might be overwhelming also in terms of like a lot in terms of like the elasticated waist the way in which they have you do the casing for the garments you are going to be using bias binding and you're going to sew that bias binding onto your fabric and you're going to make your casing that way instead of like the more traditional way where you're where you make a channel out of your seam allowance and so the, the reason why i say again advanced this is advanced beginner and not for beginner is because the fabric choices that they recommend are fabrics such as uh chalet and um crepe and charmeuse you know things that are a little bit more drapier um things that you would not necessarily recommend to beginners like they are stable but some of those can be very slippery like this here i'm i worked with a crepe 
rayon fabric that is um, a silky fabric from Joanne Fabrics and and it moves a lot and it's very very drapey and so to sew a casing on top of a fabric like that is just something that you might not want to do um you know it, especially if you're a beginner so that's the only reason why i would say it's advanced beginner friendly because there are some skills that you need to have before going into the project or it would make it more easier for you uh, going into the project but it also calls for cotton blends as well so you could definitely use a more stable cotton something that's not so slippery or silky or whatever and still get the same results the instructions like i said very easy to read um, i felt like they were complete and it takes you through each step of the process and I mean, it's, it's very, very good instructions. So I would not worry about the instructions. Um, as far as my own commentary and also my thoughts on the pattern, I like the pattern. I like the style of the pattern going into the project. I was a little bit nervous because this is a Laura Ashley design. And if you all remember, the Laura, the Laura Ashley McCall's pattern that I made at the beginning of fall with that beautiful rayon cotton uh, mustard colored floral print from fabric.com. That pattern, like the tears just, they didn't line up. And that was really frustrating for me because I couldn't get any of the tears to line, line up on the side seams and what have you. And so anyway, I'll link that video here, but I was a little bit nervous because this is a Laura Ashley design and I did not know if uh, elements of this pattern was from that pattern. And so I, I will be honest, I was a little bit nervous going into the project, but I didn't have any problems with the ruffles. It aligned beautifully. Um, it, it And this this ruffle here as you can see in the picture you can actually see the, the the ruffles and the gathers it's way more pronounced than the other garment that i made which i'm really happy about and i'm really pleased about so again i love this pattern the only thing that i will caution you about is the necktie so with the neck detail it's a really nice beautiful like I said pussy bow tie it gets sewed onto the neck of the garment so basically you are going to put the necktie after you make the necktie you put the necktie around the neck of the garment and you baste that in place and then you put your facings on top of that so the um, necktie is going to be sandwiched in between the garment and the facing and then you flip your facing to the inside of the garment like that and then your necktie will be on top of your garment and it'll come out and you can tie it however you wish to tie it um the only thing with this is that the necktie is not wide enough in my opinion um and so it caused for my necktie to keep like rolling out and so it just, it didn't want to lay flat like you see here on the envelope. It just was not laying flat because like I said, the tie wasn't wide enough and so it wouldn't lay down. So I had to stitch mines in place here, here, and in the back. So it's actually stitched in place. See, it won't come up because it's stitched in place. That's the only issue I had but as I said before, um, everything worked out really well with this garment. I love the fabric. It's very comfortable, very, very sleek, and it feels really nice and soft against my skin. So I'm glad, I'm happy with the fabric choice that I, I made as well. Um, there's something else I wanted to tell you. Oh, in way of alterations and adjustments, I didn't really make any alterations and adjustments. I told you all the sizings that I, that I chose for this project, which is the medium. And in the future, like I said, it was, it's way too big. 
um, but because it's supposed to be a loose fitting style, you really can't tell it's too big, but I definitely could go down to the extra small size. I'll make sure that I put all of the sizing information in this video and also in the, the description box below so you can get an idea of um, how much ease everything has. Also, one more thing before I go to the last segment of the video. Um, in, in terms of alteration and adjustments, as I said before, I didn't really make any alterations, but I did make a small adjustment to the pattern. And that is, so as you can see here, my sleeve at the bottom is gathered at the very bottom of the sleeve. So basically I just made a channel at the bottom of the sleeve. Um, and I put my elastic through the bottom of the sleeve. That's not the way in which the instructions tell you to to do it. You're actually supposed to make a channel like, um, I think it's like maybe about five eighths of an inch up from the, the, the uh, raw edge of the sleeve. And you're supposed to gather it in in the middle. I didn't like that style. So I'll show you here. I, I just did not like that style. So I just decided to gather mine at the bottom and just leave it like that at the bottom. So that's how I, I'm wearing mine. That's the only adjustment that I made. All right, so let's get to the last segment of this video and talking about uh, this fabric switch. So me and Emily, as I stated before, um, this video is all about um, this collaboration that we we have done on this project. So I had to do the pattern review portion of that so that you can know, you know, the details of the pattern and our experience with it. So Emily is going to give you her experience with it, but her experience is going to be a little bit different than mine because she used a knit fabric. All right. So. I'm going to go ahead and get into talking about this fabric switch. So in terms of fabric switching, there are some rules. There are some things that you need to consider. And that's why I am here today to share with you the knowledge that I have gained with fabric switching. So the first thing that you want to look at when you are thinking about using a knit fabric that uh, I'm sorry, a woven pattern with a knit fabric. So what you want to look for, you want to look for the design. Like that's one of the first things that you should look for. The structure of the pattern, okay? Is it a loose fitting pattern or is it close fitting? Is it semi fitted? Is it, you know, what kind of design is it? because that's going to give you an indication as to whether or not you can use a knit fabric for that pattern. You also want to look at things like, um, does this pattern have uh, closures? So do you need buttons? Do you need uh, hooks and eyes, zippers, loops, you know, anything like that. Um, that's also going to be an indication as to whether or not you can use a knit or an indication um, as to whether or not you need to change, make changes to that pattern so that it can be more knit friendly. Um, also, my, my recommendation, especially if this is like your first time doing this and you're going into this just to see what you can get away with, uh, so to speak, my recommendation would be to do something similar to this. So um, pick a pattern that has a loose fitting silhouette. So as I stated before, you want to look at the silhouette and see if the silhouette is loose or uh, semi fitted or fitted or whatever. Um, also look at the fabric recommendations or suggestions because sometimes with um, patterns that are designed for woven. Sometimes um, you'll see on the list, you can use a ponte with it 
or maybe a jersey knit or whatever. So look at the, the suggested fabrics as well because that can give you also another indication as to what you can do with that pattern. Um, so again, I would definitely invest in looking at looser fitting garments that has maybe that's maybe like a pullover top or a pullover dress or um or a romper or something like that something that might be um designed that has like a elasticated waist or um something that may have a zipper but still very loose fitting and then you can omit the zipper because it can still be worn as a pullover so things like that um I'm going to go ahead and put all of the resources and the links that I have on on uh, switching fabrics or converting um, patterns. And you can take a look for yourself. Very informational stuff. Uh, one link is to Scene Work Magazines. They have an article, I think it was a 2016 article on how you can um, convert, do conversions. Um, also, so altered style. Um, I follow them on Instagram. Really beautiful women, um, Mac and Katie. And you can look at their article on, you know, what are some things that I need to think about before going into a project like this. And then um, Melly So, she also has a wonderful blog post out on how you can do uh, fabric switching as well. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments about um, anything in this video or anything on my channel, uh, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for tuning in, for lending your time and support as always. I hope you like these projects and don't forget to go over to my girl Emily's channel, show her some love and watch her video and see what she has to say and what her experience was like with this challenge. All right, thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you all have a fabulous sewing week. And until next time, stay creative, my friends.